collecting some while I was away for the past second. Oh, I need I need to go over to this display. That's what I got to remember to do. Dual displaying is hard. Um, all right, I am. Uh, we are streaming here live on the UAF Twitch channel. Hello, Devin. Hello. I am joined by Devin Drown, a full-on professor. Assistant professor. Oh, maybe someday, Devin. <laughs> maybe more someday. Years. An assist. So yeah, what's well, what's the difference between assistant professor and a, who are you assisting? <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a, a funny terminology. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk too much about that. I apologize. <laughs> Trying to get her in the camera here. Um, so, but that in itself is a good title, assistant professor. You got to work towards that. What yeah. are you before you were just a faculty member, just a teacher before you're an assistant professor? Um, no, I was hired as an assistant professor. Oh. So there are instructors uh, that uh, aren't uh, tenure track. I think is maybe the distinction there. It's starting to get into some bureaucratic. Things. Right, right. That's that's all part of the mystery that we're solving here. And we are um, streaming computer lunches, uh, cell to singularity. And I, uh, when I posted the link to the to the event on Twitch this week, and computer lunch responded saying that they were really excited right. to see actual scientists enjoying the game. Yeah, um, it's, it's been a great few months here, and I enjoying know. It. Yeah, three months in. Um, so it's an evolutionary uh, simulator, uh, but the one big thing that we like to point out at the beginning is uh, it's designed for a creator, the user, to be the creator of this simulated universe, yeah. which is not how evolution works that's, that's as right. we understand it. That's right. Yeah. What we've learned, and you can go back and look at our past two sessions, <laughs> evolution is cruel. <laughs> Certainly. It leaves the non-successful mutations behind. That's right. And depends a lot on the suffering of others to <laughs> succeed. <laughs> but that's all right, because that's how we've become the, the apex uh, species. Uh, yeah, you could argue with that point, I Ooh, think. Let's uh, not do that. Let's just <laughs> play some cell to singularity. All right, so over the past uh, month, um, we've been accumulating um, some resources. And this is resource management uh, as well as buying. The way this game works is there is a tech tree that's here, and you slowly move up the tech tree, and you can sc we can scroll all the way down to where we started a couple of months ago, back when we were just at the cellular level at our home star. Got some amino acids, some DNA, got the primordial soup, created the ozone layer so we could have some protection from uh, interstellar radiation. And one of the things that we talked about before is the animations that you see in here, they're rudimentary, but fairly accurate. Yeah, yeah. Of, of these. I think a good depiction of, of some of the diversity of life here. You get some jellyfish and some flatwormen. And then corresponding with each things along the tech tree, there's the different levels. There's the primordial soup. It's all bursting out of there. Look at that. <laughs> this looks so rich and, and happy. What do bacteria eat? Do they eat each other? Do they... they eat a lot of each other, yes. Mm. And other kind of macromolecules. Macromolecules. <laughs> that can, can that be our band name, Devin? Like if we had a band, it could be macromolecules. <laughs> the, macromolecules. the macromolecules. And then there's the ocean level here with our jellyfish. Oh, one thing that I did get as a bonus is that shark. <laughs> so um, every day uh, there is a bonus thing that you can get. And the question mark I discovered is the shark. Ah. So I think if I make it through all of these again, we'll get another shark, shark. swimming around in here. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like a bonus thing because sharks sharks are cool. And then after the water comes the land. We've got some mammals and some lizards hopping around on here. And then we get to the level of fire, um, which right now we just have this one sort of hominid that's sitting around. Oh, let me bring that back so it gets in the stream right. Um, and so that's what we've, we've got going on in there. And that's sort of where we are in our levels, and then along with also the game, we can, oh, uh, I'll bring this thing back over in here. We can see all these things to buy. Mm -hmm. There's our achievements. We've only unlocked 18 out of 145. <laughs> That's the way they keep us playing. We, we really get those achievements. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is some uh, bonuses with the lightning that we can do. Like with 10 Darwinium, we could jump an hour into the future. Or get four Darwinium. That's the little bonus thing. That's where the microtransactions are because Computer Lunch, they want to make money. You know, they put in so you can buy some Darwinium. Of course, here with the university budget, uh, we're not allowed to do that. For, yes. You know, we got to spend it on other things besides uh, this. But we're able to um, play this, the free version of this game, which is so, so much fun. Here's other things that we can buy on the um, sort of cellular level. See, it has the DNA there. That's the international sign for small things. <laughs> uh, and then the, some of the support things that we can get. 
Uh, all right, so this is where we are, and lo looming on the tech tree here. Last time we got all the way up to where we were thinking about trying to buy some complex emotions or endurance hunting. Right now we're super rich. We can afford whatever we want. What do you think, Assistant Professor Drown? What would you like? <laughs> Well, complex emotions seems like a, complex emotions. Seems like a kind of a, let's get some of that. All right. So once we get that, oh look at that. Oh, there they are. We've been wondering where our Neanderthal friends. So it's Neanderthal. I, I think so. Not Neanderthal. I, I think that's the um, the pronunciation that people like to use these days. Okay. And so now from here, so forget about the endurance hunting. Well, that's fortunately we've got enough for that. But look at that. Do you want to get the humans, or do you want to get the Neanderthals? Well, you know, for the sake of kind of historical <laughs> reasons, it seems like we should get the Neanderthals uh, first. Uh, an offshoot of Homo erectus, the Neanderthals had the mental capacity to craft musical instruments and to develop speech, but represent an evolutionary path that humanity ultimately did not follow. What, do you know why? I mean, what are, the, what are some of the reasons that we follow, that life forms follow paths or don't? Is it just... Was it a war between the humans and the Neanderthals? Was it were yes. they just boring? <laughs> so my understanding of uh, of this part of our evolutionary tree is that Neanderthals and, and uh, Homo sapiens coexisted for actually quite a long period of time, and um, they uh, were coexisting in some parts of Europe. If you've ever done one of these uh, genetic tests, a 23andMe kind mm -hmm. of things, they, they, they give you even a statistic of what percentage of you, uh, of <laughs> Neanderthal you are, you know, 1% or 3%. And uh, so there's pretty extensive evidence that they probably were bred out of existence. So there was a lot of interbreeding mm. and mixing between um, the lineage that eventually led to modern humans and Neanderthals and, uh, and, and a serious amount of competition. There, yes, so. and which in science terms means they fought a lot. <laughs> and there was things, that, atrocities probably. Certainly. Our, yeah. our far, far ancestors committed on these Neanderthals. Um, but obviously, here even in the South of Singularity, <laughs> the Neanderthal tree ends right there. Yeah, we, it is. A, a sad, it. <laughs> unfortunately, it looks like a sad uh, dead end branch. Oh, there. that's too bad. But... There's other, do you want to get the humans or do you want to go down here and maybe get some endurance hunting before we go up to there? Oh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm ready for some humans. You're ready for some humans. Okay. Let's, let's, get, so let's see what happens when we do this. Earth's dominant species. Oh, an upright primate with big ideas starts contemplating world domination. <laughs> All right. I think we're do you we're contemplate gonna... world domination? Never. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> There we go. Look, there's a human. There's a human. Now, it's, it looks to be a gendered male human, which would not end very well. I'm pretty sure that that species would, <laughs> would end quickly. Um, but there we go, I think, for, uh, for, 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 you know, for politeness sake. Uh, oh, there's two shapes down there for a human. Um, so Earth's dominant species, an amalgamation of millions of years of evolution. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, maybe we could even say billions of years. Mm. Capable of producing culture, society, and technology. We talked a little bit last time about how other animals have technology as well. There are some apes and monkeys that use tools. Yeah. and Otters use tools. Fish and birds. There's a lot of the diversity of life are, are tool users. So it's not necessarily... Does a tool count as technology, or is technology more like Ooh, a I car? Don't, I don't know. It's a good question. Is you know, is a simple tool like a stick used to poke ants out of... Is that technology, or is that just a tool? I don't know. That's oh. a, it's a good question. Let's get some funding. We can find out. <laughs> that's, that's the way that science works. You get a little funding. Um, okay, so there's humans crawling around here now um, on our land level. Uh, what else can we do over here? Let's see if we can... You want to buy any of these sort of upgrades? An excretion mm -hmm. opening? You know, it sounds <laughs> gross, but it sounds it's probably very, very important. Yeah, it does. It seems <laughs> like we've managed to leap up the... How did we do that without... Maybe it was the technology needed to have toilet tissue, so we didn't want that. Well, yeah. what do you say we buy some? Yes, it, it will make the fish 50% more efficient. And that's a good thing. There's one of those. Uh, predation. Or the burial—that was also something that we that we came across last time. Is yeah. this 
And why would it, I guess it, I, th I still think it's very interesting how they link the, the burial to making the humans more efficient. Maybe it's, we don't get sick because our corpses aren't rotting downstream. <laughs> yeah, old Aunt Betty isn't yes. just, uh... <laughs> just sitting over there. We're going we're gonna to bury her. I'm going to go yes. ahead and, and, yeah. and, and yeah. do that. Oh, this is a dangerous one. Religion. Hmm. So, I know, it's where do you start <laughs> talking about this thing? Well, it was just Easter and Passover, so That's religion right. can be a very unifying mm -hmm. thing, thing to be very comforting, mm -hmm. um, especially at this level. We're trying to figure, I don't see any science things coming in here yet. I guess the stone tools is something. Yeah. Um, do religions evolve? Like, do they have some of that evolutionary quality where a successful religion gets the resources of people believing? Does it follow that same sort of pattern? Yeah, you could certainly think about it in using the same kind of framework. Now, uh, when, when we use the word evolve, right, we're, we're kind of speaking loosely there. When we're talking about the diversity of life, we, we, when we use evolve, we're thinking about evolution by means of natural selection, and particular mechanisms, right? But if we say, uh, you know, this course evolved over the time that I've been teaching, uh, they were just talking about change, right? So... So I guess evolution has like it's a new iteration of that creature. Is there something different on a cellular level? Yeah. So for you know the definition means that there's some heritable trait. So something that means that your offspring resemble or the offspring resemble the parents. So that's that's the definition of a heritable trait, um, and and that changes over time. So that's that's evolution. That is evolution, not yeah. just. Not just, I liked what worked before, and now I'm including that yeah. in this test or in this final exam. Yeah. So, but Are we, you careful about doing that, or do you slip up sometimes when you're talking with people, or because you're an evolutionary biologist, you are very conscious of when you use that E word? I, I probably avoid that E word in, in contexts that are not in a biological context. <laughs> uh, and in class, I try and reserve it for when I'm talking about biological evolution. So that's a good but, takeaway for the audience. Make sure you're not throwing evolve uh, around all the time. And adapt is another term that's oh. used quite freely as well. When we think of adaptations or adaptation in an evolution class, we're thinking about things that are selected for by natural selection. That's the things that are surviving because they have these heritable traits. But, you know, we can think about well, it was cold, and so I put a jack. You know, I adapted to the cold, and I put a jacket on, and and those are very, those are different uh, ideas. Because we do think like um, acclimatizing is another That's word. Right. Like I jumped in the cold water, and it took me a second to acclimatize That's to it. Right. Is that more accurate than adapt, or is it? I think in uh, common usage, that's probably a. a better use interesting but, uh, ah, but, the learning goes on yeah i think it, it's it's one of the cases where and it comes back to, a little bit to religion where some of the controversies in talking about evolutionary biology or um, mm. have to do with how you use these terms how loose or how specific you use these terms because there's big resistance to when uh, darwin published that origin of species the idea that we could like we somehow grew out of monkeys, but there are monkeys still around. How yeah. did that work? Yeah. So some of the, I, I'm, I'm not uh, an expert on the history of this uh, field, but um, actually the scientific community was uh, very anxious and very happy to see this theory come about and see this proposition uh, by Darwin and, and Wallace actually started to get a little bit of credit for oh, proposing these early ideas. Was Wallace a woman? Is that how that No, okay. no. In fact, That's no, a different no, science no, discussion. No, they were both uh, white males. Uh, <laughs> and they were exchanging letters kind of before. And um, one of the kind of more recent uh, revelations is that it, it appears as though they were working on these ideas simultaneously. Wallace sent a letter to Darwin, and Darwin realized, oh, he's, he's very close to the same idea. So they... So they eventually published these proceedings at the exact, at the same time, and uh, so that, that sort of happens in science a lot. It teams does. are working on the same sort of idea, and then they're like, "Hey, I just made this finding," and the other team is like, "We made the same finding." That's right, and it it really speaks to the need for collaboration and kind of a, a science is going to benefit from an open scientific community rather than a closed one, where everybody's you know working in their own uh, area and coming up. 
doing duplicate work, right, rather than working together. So uh, well, I think working together is one thing we talked about that makes a good society. All right, pick something to buy. What do you want right. to buy? Um, we can afford all these things. Is, it seems like endurance hunting. Let's see if that, I'm kind of curious okay, if that unlocks some other all right. ideas. Let's see. We, so endurance hunting, we'll go back up the tech tree here. Oh, look, predation was way down there. Oh, nope, it just sort of gives no, some there. bonuses to, to how things are going. Let's see what else we can get on our shopping Must be list. Big over. game there, I see. I see um, some phantom links there. You have to spend some so ideas. big game, you want to spend some yeah, ideas on that? Yeah. All right. And then st get some stone tools. Sure, yeah. Oh, look at all that stuff that it just unlocked. <gasps> Art, clothing. Keys to culture. Still, still we're, we're reluctant to get a little. I'm going to get the religion. I'm All just right. going to do it in there and see what happens. Okay, um, so let's look at the tech tree. And Oh, look, an achievement. We've got an achievement. The glowing green of success. Let's see what achievement we got. First human. Okay, there we, go. we got that one a little bit ago. All right, so in the tech tree here, let's take a little bit more of an overview, see if anything new has come out of here. I realized how I can manipulate it here, the old... Uh, W S A D oh, wow. keys help. Um, R O so we can get so oh look at this. Yeah, uh, here. There's a whole bunch of stuff opening up up here. Yeah. Looks like we're getting close to the singularity. All right, which of these things? Hunting. Still how about some hunt did we get that one? I think we already have we did that, that one. one. Fishing, fishing we didn't do. Yeah, we better get fishing, right? Okay, yeah. So Being in Alaska. Alaska right? Yep, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we got some fishing. Um, the Stone Age people are 100% more efficient. So look at that. The ideas are really cranking up now. <laughs> um, oh, where next? Where next? The tools? Uh, I, yeah, let's do uh, cave paintings. Some sorry. cave painting? Okay, okay, great. It's a humble start, but a key first step. One day we'll have our Da Vinci's. Oh, All look right. at that. More artwork over there. That's, that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, were, were we were we holding off on the Neolithic there? No, no, uh, not at all. No, let's, you're let's, you're you want to do that? Yeah, let's that just sounds jump great. Into there. I'm, I'm Boom, curious. Boom. Let's this see is what that's do. like. Oh, looks like we're hidden behind a little bit of grass <laughs> here on our uh, a hut. Ah, our lonely uh, hominid there now is getting some company. A friend from hunter gathering to farming. The first villages begin to form. Some people survive the Neolithic age by being brave. Others by being <laughs> cowardly and smart. <laughs> What? Which would you say you are? <laughs> uh, certainly all three of those, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid that I would sort of turn into the cowardly, the, just hide in my hut and let those other people fight it out. Uh, all right, so there's, we've got some villages. So what's the risk now um, for evolution? Once villages happen, what does that mean? What do, what do we have to do to survive if we have a village? Do we have to, is there more agriculture that needs to go on? Is there more of a threat? Because people are going to want our houses. Well, one of the things that I think is kind of interesting about when humans started to come into build societies or larger, larger groups is uh, diseases. So you can think about, you know, when populations are really not so dense and sparse, you know, a disease has potentially very little chance of kind of propagating through and, and wiping out a whole community. But when you have a really dense community or start bringing lots of humans together, then then that opportunity for diseases to, to mm. kind of spread and exist for longer periods of time, you know, they might not burn out so quickly. I'm just wondering if there's disease on the tech tree or not, <laughs> or what that does. So that also means that you need to fight the diseases. That's you need right. to Medicine, either uh, quarantine. That's where in science. Did yeah. science start because of fighting diseases, or was science part of the engineering for the technology? Or where do you think like that? I, I don't know the history. Who was the that. first scientist? Oh, geez. Like the, the person <laughs> who carved the wheel? Was it the person who planted, who ate an egg? Like that's a risk in itself. Like I'm going to crack this thing open and eat what's inside. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer know. to that. Maybe, maybe we'll maybe find we'll, out here. Yeah, maybe sell the singularity. Uh, sell sell the singularity. We'll, <laughs> we'll give a little bonus here while we're doing that. Um, okay, so here on our tech tree, we can zoom in a little bit. So do you want to, let's see, we can buy, we got a brain, or do we, we haven't bought a brain yet. Brain seems pretty critical. So That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we got that. Um, we can do some farming. Yeah. Or do you want to, okay, some farming? Yeah, yeah farming. we should do some farming. Let's see what that opens up here. 
Humans learn to control crops, settle down, and grow larger. Uh-oh. And this was the one I was curious about, too. What do you, what, what happened with, like, who was, would you have taken a wolf into your house or a tiger? Like, this looks like a great animal to bring home to the kids. Yeah, I'm sure there were, that, that the, the start of domestication was probably full of false starts, is my <laughs> suspicion. <laughs> <laughs> like where's Grog? Grog got eaten by his pet wolf. Well, okay, I yeah. won't get that. Yeah. That yeah. wolf. Exactly. Have did um, domesticating the animals change? Like, did they actually adapt or evolve using those terms in a biological way to be more domesticated? Yeah, yeah. There's evidence that um, uh, domesticated dogs that, that there's traits that were um, favored by humans, and so those traits are what make. Um, when, what we think of uh, when we think of domesticated dogs, those are very they have different traits than wild dogs. You know, they're a lot more calm and mm -hmm. um, oh, uh, now now I'm going to have to think of other other particular <laughs> examples. But well, they're like they'll you know hang out with you. They'll come when you call. You can yeah. train them. Maybe yeah. that you know. They Unlike domesticated cats, right? <laughs> right. Yes. Although my, my cat does know his name and he follows me around, but there are certain times I'm like, hey, come over and cuddle cat. No. Yes, nothing. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not interested in that right now. Um, should we domesticate some animals? Sure, yeah. Let's see what that opens Seems up like here. Seems like it's going to open up a lot of things there. Oh, look at that. So that's an interesting offspring. So you domesticate the animal. The animal obviously excretes because we got that excretion opening. And then you can use that <laughs> excretion to make this fertilizer. Now, who would have, did you, did you think someone thought of that or it just sort of happened by accident? And I noticed they weren't cleaning up after their oxen and then the fields really flourished in that area you could certainly uh, uh, come up with ways where that might have been a, you know <laughs> a, a happy accident mm -hmm. you know oh we happen to notice the crops do well in that part of the field or something. and why would that be yeah. or it's right near the pen all right so um should we go back down and see if we missed anything you want to fill yeah. do you want to get some artwork over here yeah it seems like maybe that's crucial some sculpture and clothing okay sculpture some clothing. We're not Ooh. short of ideas, right? No, we've got, we're, and we're getting more by the second up there. Um, all right, so now the big choice do you want to make some clothes or do you want to make some pottery? Oh, pottery. Let's, all right, let's, let's see yeah. what happens if we do that one. Oh, did that, what is going on? I'm curious about where that's all leading. Oh, there's the pottery itself. Uh, <laughs> we're going to get that right there. Oh, uh, the now wheel. we are talking. <laughs> That's the stuff right there. How important really is the wheel, do you think, for for human culture? I know you're not an engineer. Yeah. Well, you're in the biology engineering, molecular, molecular biology. Yeah. Just as a human. Like, if you, do you think that's it's a... pretty important. Pretty important. <laughs> pretty important. All right, let's get a wheel there and see what happens. One of the earliest and most profound of innovations, such a simple design, and yet with the wheel, so many improvements became possible, no, most notably for travel. The world has been transformed, and we can't imagine life without it. That's very true. Yeah. Computer lunch, sell the singularity. Uh, all right, let's see what else. If there's, we're missing anything else that we... Where is, what's, what are we not opening up down here? There must be something later on that comes. Yeah. All right, interesting, interesting. Okay. Um, all right, so things are getting closer and closer to the way we know the world today. Do you want to get some weaving? Do you want to get sure, some beads? Yeah, yeah we better, better fill out this end of the culture. All right, let's get some of that. And we're still doing good on ideas, the dye, there's some beadwork. Beads are the most ancient of all jewelry. Our people have gained a taste for the decorative and the aesthetic. <laughs> From here, we'll invent more complex and elaborate works of craft. We haven't even dipped into our Darwinium yet. <laughs> um, so does, you mentioned Wallace and Darwin worked together. Do you think that Darwin has been given too much credit for how we sort of understand natural selection, or was he just the bravest voice out there for this scientific idea? It's probably the louder voice. Uh, you know, Wallace was younger and uh, uh, doing a lot of field work, I think, and so uh, I think that's one of the reasons why uh, we know more about Darwin. Certainly published more really large anthologies, kinds of promoting those ideas. But there's there's definitely a a trend I'm noticing from when I learned evolutionary biology as a college student to now as I'm teaching it that 
textbooks are certainly giving Wallace more credit. Hmm. Uh, so I think there's a, a, a change in attitudes about Darwin that. had better PR. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he went on a big, you know, sailing expedition around the world. That and, must have been pretty. Yeah, and and Wallace has been quite famous for some ideas about the distribution of organisms. So there's Wallace oh. has his own line. Uh, so there's a, a a particular break in the distribution of organisms uh, in Southeast Asia that he noted. You know, he thought, saw things that were kind of north of this line or west of this line were very different from things that were south of this line, east of this line. Why are these European names that we know? Is it that they have the money to do this research and that uh, people in Asia and you know, they're, they're just not, do we just not see their, what they've published or is it just part of our Eurocentric worldview that these are the names that we associate I, with this? Uh, yeah, I, I'm only guessing at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say it's the kind of Eurocentric nature of, of science or at least biology from, from my understanding, so. Because the thing that you mentioned was this this huge diversity that are like in rainforests or on Pacific islands and things like that, which are close to you know China and Japan, and, were, and, and they must have had great scholars too. Yeah, and brilliant yeah. philosophers and things yeah. like that. So that's interesting. I'm a, that's hmm. okay. Uh, all the stuff that we think about when we're streaming cell to singularity. <laughs> Thanks, computer lunch. All right, where do you want? Oh, let's maybe so you can see some buffs. Can we buff ourselves up here a little bit more? What do you want to do? All right, so we got uh, a plow, some gears. Some sales, or do you want to go deep into our genes? Get some more DNA, some flatworms and reptiles. Do you want to buy more humans? It seems like it would be nice to have two. Okay, there we go. So now we have two humans. How about we go up to? We'll have some. How many humans do you need for a diverse? Like at the, at the end of the world, Devin. It is it. We need to rebuild humanity. How many humans do you need to have a successful re yeah. rebirth? Yeah, a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in you breeding, can't just you can't just have two. Yeah, inbreeding gets pretty bad, and and you know I think there are some royal families that are kind of well aware of of those difficulties. Yeah, the Habsburg so, line. Yeah, so if yeah. you're not go Google the Habsburgs, there's <laughs> portraits of them, all the remarkably similar noses, and yeah. that, that ends badly. So <laughs> so our evolutionary biologist says if you want to, if it's the end of the world, you need to repopulate. You need a lot, a lot of humans, more than just ten or twelve or, yeah. or twenty. You need a lot. You know? Yeah. Um, okay, it looks like we're doing okay. What over here? So we want to buy more Neolithic people? Sure. Uh, can can more, we... Go ahead. Can we move beyond the Neolithic? Have we, oh, I don't know. Let's find have out. We, let's find out. What do we got going on here? There's a, Okay, the tech tree is where we're going. And then... Ah, over city. To oh, you want to buy a city? Great, yeah, we can do that. Seems. Let's get a city. Oh, now we're going to be mining. You want plows? You want how about some domesticated animals? Horse domestication. Yeah, oh, I was wondering good. what that was. Ah, oh, and the mighty chariot with the wheel <laughs> that we got earlier. I'll throw some fertilizer in there. Oh, ah. oh, that. So, do we need sort of the the fun and the parties that are associated with alcohol? Like, is that important for us as an animal, or is it just important for us as a culture? So one of the one of the neat things about alcohol uh, is that I think the idea is that it's actually a preservative for, you know, it makes our things that we drink safe, essentially. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, killing a lot of uh, pathogens and whatnot. And so... The diseases that that's, threaten That's us. right. Yeah. So, um, you know, these fermented foods and fermented beverages weren't... I mean, I think that side effect certainly is obvious, but... Mm -hmm. uh, I think some of the ideas is that these were um, enriched in cultures because of their preservative nature. So again, who drank that the first time? Yeah, like, like oh. the first time I had beer, it tasted terrible. <laughs> like, why would you do that again? Yeah. But maybe it's the inebriation part. That maybe maybe the alternative of drinking the water that <laughs> makes you <laughs> sick. <laughs> that tasted bad, but I survived. <laughs> My friend drank the water and they died, so I'm going to go with. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so let's get some of that since we're talking about that. Neolithic men are twenty percent, or Neolithic no, humans, or Neolithic people, the towns. Oh, and and uh, the authors of the video game there even mentioned the um, uh, disinfecting uh, qualities there. Very yeah. effective. Very so good job, developers. Thanks, yeah. Computer Lunch. It's just that's why. 
And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to stream this game with someone like you, is to see like how does the game compare to what the reality is. And as we've discovered over the past few months now, it's got some real stuff happening yeah, in there. Yeah, quite a bit of, of, of good information here. Uh, okay, so looks like we got to get this connects to this one over here, and so does the plow. Yeah, so we have to certainly get the plow. All right, so the plow, does that open that up? No. Does writing open that up? <gasps> And that's, is that Sanskrit? What do you think that's supposed to be? I don't know. I don't know. I can't read it. It probably says something coded. Oh, it's still not open opening nothing. that up. Oh, that's quite a mystery. That it, is. it is. It is. <laughs> and then up there, too. Well, we're going to fill in all those things. All right, let's get some mining. Let's start some mining going. Oh, Metallurgy. that's tying right into the other things. <gasps> there. Oh, the that's age. what you're talking about. Shall we do it? Sure, yeah. The Bronze Age. Ooh. <laughs> That's a dangerous place for him to be sitting there <laughs> making food. Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age. We define these entire epics of humanity by the technology they use. A quote from Reed Hastings. <laughs> Are we in the Netflix age? Because he's the Netflix guy. So is that why he's credit? All right, great. Look at that. Look at this. There's even little animation there of the, you can almost hear the chink. Yeah, of right. the, the forge in your mind. Okay. Ooh, look at all that stuff that's going on here. Let's shrink this down a little bit. Let's so get a bigger overview. So we have skipped. Do you want to send our, our culture out into the ocean? Sure, yeah. I'm sure they won't colonize where they don't belong. <laughs> I take it back. I'm sure that they will. That's sort of how it works. Um, all right. So now they're sailing. We get some gears from some engineering. Oh, look at all that stuff. It's quite curious. There's a whole bunch of uh, little glowy dots. Like things into the darkness over here. Uh, I wonder what, I wonder what, did we, I'm, I'm curious. Like, did we miss a, a <laughs> thing to improve something over here? Do we buy more brains? Nope, that's all stuff. Let's just grab that because it's, we have trillions <laughs> of those burning a hole in our pockets here. I don't know if it's just increasing the number of things that we have. I don't know. Let's just keep on yeah, going. Yeah, we're... No new achievements yet. Maybe you need to get a certain amount of things <laughs> to get those achievements. Um, all right, so we can get some glass. Yeah, that's vital mm. part of the average scientific laboratory. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm sure you've used a few beakers yourself yeah. in your time. Yeah. How about some paper? Have you used that? Uh, in too the much. Academic world? <laughs> too much. <laughs> Do you find you're using less paper now? Yes. I mean, is that a thing that that's really? Yeah, I, I find that I use a lot less paper, and and for good reasons now. It's nice not to have to carry a backpack full of physical objects and to have a whole library. When I one of the things I I noticed when I was in grad school, I had a file cabinet full of papers that I had dutifully copied from the <laughs> from, from the library and and uh, when I left grad school all of that was digital by that point oh. so that file cabinet doesn't exist anymore is there anything that can get past like actually handing out a paper test for your students or is that just something that there's just something about sitting down and getting the test handed to you and filling it out or is there an electronic way like uh, how do you as a teacher think about that uh, yeah, so I'm. Uh, um, I still have uh, tests that I give out, um, but I think one of the nice things about uh, moving to a kind of a digital form is the opportunity for kind of more back and forth with feedback. Hmm. Um, so for writing assignments, feedback isn't doesn't just have to be kind of a one-time deal. Like they turn it in, and I write some comments, and they get it, and it can be more back and forth and more incremental. You know, so maybe uh, I use Google Docs for writing assignments. They can write something I might say, can you expand upon this idea? Or you know, what do you mean by this term? And, and they can try something else out. They can write back in the comments and mm. ask me, oh, well, is this what you're looking for? Or what if I said it this way? And so they can go back and forth. And with a paper physical object that would Certainly wouldn't. Right. I mean, I remember, you know, typing and then you get the white out and then you write out the line, you have to retype it. You know, and then when you have that document, you're like, this says, don't change yeah, this because yeah. I spent hours producing that. Yeah. 
interesting. So more easier collaboration, and it can it can grow and change. I won't use the e word, <laughs> yeah. e -word there as it goes on. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Do you want to get some alphabet since we're talking about writing? Yeah. Now, this is a very specific <laughs> item. Yeah. Like, I guess it is the result of having glass and some metallurgy it, and some mining. That all comes together. It does seem to be getting us <laughs> into a very specific place. It does. Into the darkness. Into the darkness. Or... Let's see. I'm just going to sweep through. Oh, <gasps> whoa. Number zero. Big things here. It is a big thing. That's a big idea. It's almost too big to, <laughs> to talk about. Like, who... What is that concept of zero to you? What does that mean to you as, as a scientist? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's hard to verbalize, I think, maybe because it is nothing, right? Right. Uh, so, yeah, the absence, I don't know. Is that even, I mean, in nature, is there such thing as a nothing? Like, even in... The, in space, there's radiation, there's trace amounts of gases, like there's something there. Like, where is this nothing? Yeah, in, in evolutionary biology, there's an idea of uh, neutral evolution, it's called. And, and what originally that idea was that it was, there might be a change in genetic, uh, um, change in DNA that wasn't good or bad. So that was called neutral, but but really that idea changed over and was fleshed out a little bit more, and now we talk about it as nearly neutral. So it's not actually nearly zero. neutral. <laughs> it's it's nearly neutral. So it might be a little bit bad or a little bit good, uh, but, but nearly neutral. Yeah, because it's it's pretty impossible to find that zero. In yeah. That case so someone that. had it was like no, that's nothing. Like there is <laughs> that is a zero, and that idea stuck around. Surely numerical values are more complicated than we used to believe. Positive numbers are no longer sufficient. We must also account for a null position. Uh, okay, let's get some iron. Let's see what happens from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age. Should we jump to the Iron Age? You want to get some nails first? Uh, we should probably get those nails. Let's get those nails. Somewhere. All right. Well, look at that. That's like sort of the Spartan. Yeah, right. Okay, things are going to start getting mean now, even meaner. <laughs> look at that. No, oh, he, he, right he, away. He, right away. You, you predicted the, uh... <laughs> We could probably get more of those. The good Lord made us all out of iron, and he turns up the heat to forge some of us into steel, says that great philosopher, <laughs> Marie Osmond. <laughs> well, that's so. That, yeah, all humans have ideas about it. And I think it's great that they're sort of quoting some people you wouldn't usually expect. So, good job, good on you, computer lunch people. And then look, there's a whole new level of things. This book all level. Right. What does that do? They got a table. It's a very dark place. It sure right? is. There's a fireplace. Doing our writing with our alphabet. And <laughs> we sure with are. With a, we have fire, yet we somehow we do not, that candle. Yeah, it's, it's daytime. It's, 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 a summer, it's a summer day. Um, okay, should we, you want to buy any of these things? Let's see if I, so here we can buy one, buy ten, you can buy one, or you can buy as much as you could possibly buy. Um, so we could certainly spend all of our trillions on a bunch of humans. Um, or we could, how about we buy, let's go through and we can buy 10 of some of these things. Sure. Just to spend some of this. Oh, that's going to be a lot of our trillion. How about this? Do that <laughs> one. We'll get some mammals, some more bunnies. And then how about we just buy a couple more humans? Even though they're way down there now. <laughs> um, and then what do we get with our ideas? I'm just hoping that I can either unlock more achievements. Uh, some more Iron Age. Let's get another Iron Age dude. Sure. Another Bronze Age people and some Neil, another town. All right, so there we go. We still haven't used any Darwinium. All right. This is the fun part of the game where, like, we have a bunch of resources uh, to spend. All right, let's see what's going on with our tech tree here. So we've gotten up there. Oh, uh oh. This of, is all of the stuff happening here. A lot of uh, conflict uh, yeah. here. Yeah, okay, let's get some algebra. That's all nice. You know, math is important. Mathematics okay. is advancing beyond basic sums and multiplication into more abstract formulations. There's so much more we can achieve. When you were learning math in like elementary and high school, were you one of the students like, I'm not going to use this later in my life. Why am I even, why am I in algebra? No, I loved math. Uh, I loved math so much I uh, 
half of my PhD thesis was math. So, <laughs> did you just add math for for fun? And they're like, I'm just going to put another equation. Uh, no, I, it just um, there's a there's a kind of a beauty to it. To um, it's a way of of looking at complex life in a reductionist fashion, and uh, so I, I don't know. It just has a real strong appeal to me. So you can solve it. You can like, solve it. It's not it. a mystery. Yeah. It's, there's a solution. Yeah. Do you find in, in students that are more um, friendly towards math that they succeed in the sciences more? Or do you see students coming around like, oh, they finally get this beauty of mathematics? Or like, is that a part, by the time they have chosen to follow the path of there, when you see them, they've made that choice already? Oh, I, I see all kinds. I see, there's a lot of biologists who are afraid or um, of math or really hesitant about it. And, uh, um, but there are some that you know are really are quite talented in in math, and uh, so you you kind of see them from all perspectives. In my class, we we use math quite a bit, and uh, from you know doing statistics to understanding the evolution of life, and and I think I think some of them come around to seeing the beauty of it and the utility of it. Math is certainly important for a video game because it only works by computer algorithms and right. functions and things like that. Yeah. When I look at it, it takes me so long when I'm looking at an equation, just my mind, to, to like look at the code and be able to figure out how it's all working together. Yeah, uh, you know, having a understanding logic and, um, and computer programming, those kind of go hand in hand. I certainly see that. But it's uh, computer programming, vital skill in biology these days. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, things. I mean, we've talked a couple of times before about how you're giving your students amazing technology they can have right in their hands that can do massive amounts of complex mathematics right away and to analyze a genome of a creature. That's right. Yeah, yeah, we've been been using those um, these uh, pocket USB powered DNA sequencers for for all kinds of even things. that sounds very Star Trekky. Like <laughs> I've got my pocket USB DNA sequencer right. Here. Okay, let's go ahead. So okay, now do we want? Okay, so I'll, I'll give you a nod here, Devin. <laughs> we could stop right now before we get to the singularity, or, oh, what time is it? We've got some time left today. Yeah. Or do you want to start bringing in some, some of the violence of war? Well, I am kind of anxious to get a little closer to the singularity. All right, so, uh, so let's get some gunpowder. We'll get a military. Can't have military. The military helps secure the government. Some iron tools. Oh, let's go right for the science here. So yeah. Let's go. We were talking about the dirty water before. Sanitation. That there seems we go. very important. I particularly like this one, so I'm <laughs> going to go in there and get some glasses. Um, all right. This looks like the next step. Yeah, Middle Ages. All right. Let's go ahead and do that. Whoa, there it is. Ah, there's our book. Look at that book <laughs> right there on our table. We owe to the Middle Ages the two worst inventions of humanity, <laughs> romantic love and gunpowder. Where would we be? We wouldn't have movies or anything without that stuff. Okay, great. Look at that. And look, we're just, our resources are just skyrocketing here. Um, ooh, look at all this stuff. All right, so swords or guns? Swords or guns? <laughs> Which do you want? Well, uh, for completeness, I, I, I think we should go with the swords. Okay. Great. There we go. Uh, we still have some money, so we can do some firearms. Oh, fireworks. Fireworks, yeah, that goes right along with that. This is going to help us with our agriculture. Oh, this is now, we're taking this to the next level. <laughs> oh, then look, our resources, our ideas are going down. Um, so that we don't even have a million to buy a microscope. Uh, we can get feudalism, though. <laughs> Advanced government here. All right, let's get some serfs happening. <laughs> Um, and then, have we reached the end of, no, we can get movable type or coinage, which would you like? Or a fire lance. I don't even know really what that is. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, uh, let's go for movable type. Movable type. Maybe, okay. maybe, maybe we can stay away <laughs> we'll from say the, the dangerous the weapon. fire right lance. Uh, and then the printing press is outside of our, what yeah. we can buy right now. Um, but what we do, oh, with movable typeset, we've reduced the task of printing down to written language's most basic parts. Individual characters can now be reused and redistributed to form anything we want, from individual words to full pages. We're approaching the age of publishing. 
Mm. How important is movable type to your work? <laughs> well, publishing is certainly <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, fundamental. That's, that's one of the things that, I mean, when you hear about academia, if you're not involved, you hear that publish or perish, publish yeah. or perish. Is yeah. that a true thing that you find in academia? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It is the currency by which we're measured. Is how much you put out there and publish. Yeah. Because that also means that your work is peer reviewed. Mm -hmm. People say, yes, that Devin Drown, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that you're doing credible science and, uh, yeah, there's, um, yeah, it's a pretty it's vital a thing. part. It's yeah. a thing. Okay, so we have this Darwinium. Let's see, since we've earned it, what we can spend it on here. We might be able to get some more ideas with our Darwinium. Uh, we can get one million <laughs> ideas for four. We've got 14. Or, yeah, we've got, we, so that's a million. Should we do that? Yeah. I mean, we've got the Darwinium. So there's a million ideas that we can now spend we could also warp an hour into the future, which would give us, you know, because if we're getting 6, idea, 600 ideas a second, how many is that, math man? <laughs> I don't know. A lot. But we'll stick with that million that we've got right now. Yeah. Um, so that means, oh, we can't. We, oh, we're still a little we short sure of can't the get the microscope. <laughs> we could do organized religion. Looks like they're both leading to this one, if that's to be believed. Yeah, organized religion. Let's try plus it. the printing press. And the printing press. press equals a Bible. Is that what we're getting? Oh, it's still... Undone. How about some coinage? Sure. Ooh. Trade, right? Would you want your face on a coin? No. <laughs> you wouldn't want to carry My it around. My face is not made for money. <laughs> <laughs> more money, more problems, says the notorious B.I.G. right here yeah. in, our, in our quote for that particular growth. Um, and then uh, paper money seems like that's coming. So currency... Ah, the is I know, before I click on that one. Let's talk about what currency means. So, is currency like how do animals in nature the exchange goods without currency? Like I know penguins sometimes exchange rocks for for things. Like what have you found, or what have you? I don't. I don't know. Like how do do fish have fish money? Like I don't. I don't know. I. I feel like I've heard about uh, these ideas in non-humans, but uh, yeah, it's a, like as a like I watched some of that Our Planet documentary on mm -hmm. Netflix. Like, is a bird dance sort of a, a currency? currency? Like, hey, I'm spending my spending my energy. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Interesting. It's certainly uh, a signal. Yes, yes, it is. It is. Okay, so the Age of Discovery. Let's do it. Let's see what we get going on here. It looks like oh, a sextant. <laughs> That takes a lot of math to work as well. Yeah. Uh, where a man stops <laughs> drinking beer and starts <laughs> sipping coffee. Quite sophisticated. It there. sure is, but there's still no coffee here <laughs> on the table. Oh, all right, so then that's open. Oh, look at all that stuff that you get. An astrolabe. Do you watch Game of Thrones? I do. Because that's the thing at the beginning in oh, the credits. So right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sneak in and buy one of those just because we're, we're thinking about that. Um, oh, and then a magnetic compass. And there's the sextant. Uh, herbalism, we can get that. Banking, let's see. Did we? What have we missed down here? Well, there's that Best precious fire, fire lance. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Let's fill in some of this side over here. A musket. Oh, this is also by igniting propellant and expelling the exhaust in one direction, we can launch a vessel upwards. Rockets were initially used as incendiary weapons during mm. sieges. Mm. Do animals have weapons? Like I know some. Like some whales use their bubbles to like for nets to catch fish. Right. Do yeah. and do like uh, apes and monkeys? Do they throw rocks at each other? Like I, I think so. Yeah. And then of course there's animals that have venom. Right. Their own kind of inbuilt weapons. Yeah. Or yeah. parasites that crawl into creatures and those are gross. <laughs> you like those though. Fascinating. The fascinating. <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> um, okay. What else can what? Oh, we can afford a caravel. Is that a type of ship? Or do you want banking? Uh, uh, we've been talking a lot about money, money okay. so maybe it's a banking. banking. And then, oh, it's still going to, oh, let's see. Now we still have Darwinium to spend. So we could get another million ideas if you really want to push towards the singularity. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, we should go for it. All right, let's yeah. do it. Okay, so we got another million ideas. Woo, we're rich again. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! We've cleared all, oh, microscope. But that takes a million in itself. We can't even afford that. That mm. must be a big, 
road. That really must open up that darkness it over there. Must. That's a little bit. Uh, and then, okay, so a sextant or a compass or a cannon. Oh, this 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 seems to like. Yeah, it's gonna require a lot there. Yeah. Oh, oh finally, that's science. there's some science. <laughs> there's some science. That Shall we a, do it? Let's yeah, do it. Yeah. Let's get that scientific revolution going. Human <laughs> banish magic. What? I've read all these books and start categorizing the world around them. Now, now we're getting into what you do, right there. Yeah. Those are the tools that you have on your desk. Right? Yeah, yeah, I have two or three of those in my lab. <laughs> <laughs> As the European Renaissance came to a close, new ideas about math, biology, chemistry, physics, and astronomy changed the way we thought about the world. With the emergence of modern science, our intellectual progress as a species gets a sudden boost of speed. We are learning math more now than ever. And that seems like a pretty good... Oh, maybe we should just go and spend some of this, this entropy that we've got built up here. Uh, oh, with a steam engine. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a lot that uh, the scientific revolution there is. I'm Let's grab a steam engine while we're <laughs> um, Okay, so over here, what can we buy a max of for this? Let's do this one because it'll earn some stuff while we're right. Yeah. until the next time. We'll just go down here. Oh, we're unlocking achievements left and right here now. <laughs> We're getting it so quickly, we can't even keep up yeah, with ourselves. Yeah, we can't even buy enough jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let that. Okay, let's go see what achievements we got. Look at that. Oh, right. Well hydrated. <laughs> lots of jellyfish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, look at all those achievements we unlocked this time. Monkey business, 25 <laughs> apes. So obviously it's the amount, the, the quantity. Yeah, yeah. And that's unlocking it there. We have another 1.96 million ideas to spend. Does that mean we can buy that microscope? <laughs> Where is that microscope? Come back, microscope. There it is. Yes! Ah, just. We can! <laughs> we finally do you, saved do you our... Use, do you use microscopes a lot? Do I you? do. All yeah. right, well, let's get one of them. All right, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so we'll try to book another session. We're closer to the singularity yeah. than ever before. <laughs> we have reached all the way up here into the scientific revolution. we got a steam engine. And oh, the locomotives are 100 million, and we've started to see the threat of violence in our society. Always great hanging out with you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, man. Thanks again. Thanks again. Right. Um, we'll try to book. So you're in, maybe you're in the field next month. We'll see when we can get it. Sure. We can get it going, and we can we can have session four. That sounds great. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching the stream. Uh, be sure to share with your friends and uh, go out there and don't adapt. Just change as necessary. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody.